Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lesson 9, Transactions and DML, part 3. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to delete rows from the table and take a look on the integrity constraint in a database. The delete statement is used to remove existing rows in a table. The statement requires two values, the name of the table and the condition that identifies the rows to be deleted. This is the syntax for the delete statement. Delete from table where we have a condition. With the delete statement, we can delete a single row from table. We can delete multiple rows from table. We can delete from the subquery and we also can delete the whole table. Let's take a look at this example. Now let's delete bear from sales reps table before we delete we need to select the data and lock the uh, the row okay where last name equals to bear okay for update okay for update means we have to lock the row so if we select the data so this is the bear record so what we need to do delete from sales reps the from keyword is optional but i think uh, putting the from here looks more logical. Delete from sales rep where last name equals to pair. Okay, so if we execute this one, they say that one row is deleted. Then we select back the data to see whether it is uh, really has been deleted or not. Okay, so if we execute this one, we will have no. A row of result here means the bear has been deleted so if it's confirmed then we can commit okay so now bear is permanently deleted from the database so let's take a look on how to delete multiple rows from table for example delete from sales rep which has salary greater than 10,000 so we just select the data first select all from sales reps where salary greater than 10,000 for update. So if you execute this one, we have four, uh, sorry, three rows of table. Okay, then what we can do is delete from sales reps, delete from sales reps where salary greater than 10,000. Okay, so if you execute this one, oops, it has to be semicolon over there. Yeah? So three rows has been deleted. Then let's select back the data to preview the changes that we have made. Okay, select all from sales rep with salary greater than ten thousand. So there's no employees uh, or sales reps uh, that has salary greater than ten thousand. But I think that the changes uh, is wrong. So what we can do, we can roll back. Okay, so if you want the data back, you can roll back. Okay. So if you have rolled back, then try to select back, you will see that the data is there. Back again. Now let's take a look on how to delete uh, from the subquery. Delete the sales reps that has the same commission as a bell from employees. Now what we can do is we can select all from sorry from sales reps where commission percentage is equals to okay we select commission percentage from employees where last name equals to a bell so after we have this one oh i forget to add for update okay so if you take a look here we want to select this data. We want to lock this data, Smith and Doran here, because they have the same, uh, sell, uh, sorry, the same commission percentage as a bell. So now let's delete the data. Delete from sales reps, where a uh, commission percentage equals to. So what is our subquery? This one. Select. Okay, select commission percentage for employees where last name equals to a bell. So if we execute this query, two rows is two rows has uh, have been 
deleted so if you want to make sure then we can reselect this data again to see the changes that we have made or to preview the data that we have uh, changed okay so there's no more data so what we can do if the if the if everything is correct then we can commit so if we commit over here then the changes has become permanent now what if we want to delete data with no condition okay delete from sales reps so we have no condition over here okay so if we execute there's that 30 rows has been deleted so if we take a look if you delete with no condition all of the data in the table will be deleted so please be careful make sure you have a condition as if you want to empty the table later on we can use a different statement but for delete statement, please make sure you have a condition over here. If not, all of the data in the table will be deleted. Let's continue on integrity constraint. The constraints are automatically checked whenever a DML statement which could break the rules is executed. If any rule would be broken, the table is not updated and an error is written. Normally, the uh, the error message that you will get is parent key not found or child record found. Let's take a look on the example. What if we have this SQL statement set, uh, insert into departments, department ID, department name, manager ID, location ID, values 270, public management, null and null. So if I execute this one, they said that uh, we have an error here, unique constraint violated. What does it mean here? Take a look. Unit constraint hr.depidpk. The primary key is violated. What does it mean here? Take a look at department table. Okay. We already have the department with 270. So if you want to insert another 270, it will not be accepted. Why? Because of it violates the primary key constraint. What does it mean here? Primary key cannot be the same primary key must be unique so this one is not unique anymore so that's why it cannot be inserted but if we put another value then yes the data can be inserted because there's no departments with 500 as the department id so if we refresh here we will get the 500 as the department uh, the department id uh, is uh, inserted into the database same goes with the um, values here so manager id is a foreign key that is uh, referred to employees so we have employee 101 up until uh, one zero, uh, sorry, uh, 206 and we have inserted this now 304 and 305 so what if the department, the manager ID I put here is 800 then let's take a look um, this one 510 okay so let's take a look at the error message that we, that we will receive integrity constraint violated parent key not found because of if you take a look manager id is 800 okay manager id is 800 but if you take a look inside our employees there's no employee id with 800 as their employee id okay there's no employee with 800 as their employee id so that's why the error message that we will receive here parent key not found but if the parent key is found then it can be inserted into database same goes what if i said delete from departments where department name equals to shipping. Okay, where's department name equals to shipping. So if we try to delete this data, this one also cannot be uh, deleted. Why? Integrity constraint violated. Child record found. What does it mean here? Let's take a look. Select uh, last name, department name, from employees, we join with department using department ID so this is the common attribute where department name equals to shipping okay so if we execute this one you will see that table oh okay department sorry so if we execute here we will see that there's a lot of employees who are in department shipping so that's why when you try to delete shipping department, it cannot be cannot be done because uh, we will receive an error message of child record found because there's a child referring to it. 
okay because uh, employees department id okay employees department id is referring to departments department id so shipping here is department 50 so there's a lot of employees in department uh, there's a lot of employees in department 50 okay so if we sort this one okay so there's a lot of employees in department 50 so that's why we receive an error child record found okay so how to tackle this problem so maybe we can use uh, during the creation of the table we can use on delete cascade or on delete set null okay so it's up to you which one do you want to use but this is what we call as integrity constraint sometimes you cannot delete update or insert the data if the child record is not found or if the parent key is not found so now let's take a look on the uh, case study here we want to create a full SQL transaction script for the following. The first one, update Johnson record in sales reps table, set his salary to be increased by 1000. So what we can do is, as I said, we select all from sales rep. We need to log the data first. Yeah? Sales rep where last name equals to Johnson for update. Okay, for update. So we want to log Johnson record in the database. Okay, so now we have log Johnson. The salary is now 6,200. We want to be increased by 1,000. So what we can do is update sales reps. Set salary equals to salary plus 1,000. Where uh, last name equals to Johnson. Okay, so if we execute this one. This is what we will get. One row is updated. Okay, so let's preview. Let's preview back the, the changes that we have made, whether it is correct or not. So after we execute this one, we will see that Johnson's salary has been increased to become 7,200. Okay, then we are done with the first one. Create a save point update done. So now let's create a save point. Save point. What is the save point name? Update done. Because normally we will we will create a save point according to what is our action. Now our action is update. So we create a save point here, update, done. So if you execute, save point has been created. Okay, then now we want to delete tucker from sales rep table. Okay, delete tucker. So what we can do, select all. Okay, we want to lock tucker. Now we select all from sales reps where last name equals to tucker for update. Okay, so if we execute this one, okay, now we have lock tucker. So we want to delete tucker, then delete from sales reps where last name equals to tucker. Okay, so now we want to delete tucker. Okay, one row has been deleted. Let's select back the data to preview the changes that we have made. Okay, so tucker is no longer in our database okay based on the result here tucker is no longer in the database okay now create a save point delete done so since we have done the delete so we have a save point delete done okay so that's the action before this save point delete done okay save point has been created now undo the deletion Okay, when we talk about undo the deletion, this is the part of we, uh, of we delete the data. Okay, this is the part of we delete the data. So we want to discard these changes. So what we can do, we can roll back. If you roll back, okay, if you just roll back, okay. So let's take a look. Let's we roll back first. Okay, so if we roll back, okay, roll back complete. Then let's select back the Johnson here. You will see that Johnson's salary now has become 6,200 again. Because why? When you roll back, all of the changes that you have made is uh, discarded. Okay, all, all of the changes are discarded. Okay, but we say that we only want to undo the deletion, not the update. So actually, we can roll back to update, done. Okay, so now let's run the script uh, all over again. We lock the Johnson. We update Johnson's salary. If we take a look, Johnson's salary has become 7,200. Then we create the save point. We select Tucker. We get back the Tucker because all of the changes just now 
uh, uh, were discarded then we delete tucker one row has been deleted we select back the tucker okay so now tucker is no longer in the database we create save point delete done okay but now as i said the update is correct only the delete uh, part here is wrong so what we can do actually we can roll back to update done so this is our save point name okay we want to roll back up until here so means what we want to undo is only this part okay the the first part of our uh, script here is correct okay the first part of our script here is correct so we just want to undo this part so that's why we roll back to update done so let's take a look roll back to update done okay so means roll back complete so now let's select uh let's select uh, johnson back the johnson salary is now 7200 but if we select tucker we, uh, we will have tucker back in the database because we have undo the the changes uh, up until here okay so that's why the tucker is back in the database however johnson's record is still have salary uh, plus 1000 just now because this part of the update in the in our transaction is still correct okay now let's continue insert new sales reps name abu assume his data on your own so insert into what is our name table name sales reps what is success reps we have employee id we have last name we have salary and also commission percentage okay so what are the values that we want to insert here so if you take a look maybe in our sales rep the last record is okay maybe we just put a random number maybe 400 okay then the name is abu and what is salary maybe i put as 10000 and what is the commission 0 0.19 okay so now after we have insert after we have this uh, sql then we can insert one row has been inserted so now we want to make sure whether abu has been inserted or not we select all from sales reps where last name equals to abu okay so if we select back this data okay so we have seen that abu is already inside the database okay then create a save point insert done okay then we put save point insert done so this one to create a save point uh, is very important because sometimes not everything that you have uh, changed inside the database is wrong okay not everything is wrong so maybe certain things is wrong so if you do after each operation you put a save point it will be easier for you to roll back to certain uh, point that you want only okay then we create the save point has been created then the last part they ask you to make the changes permanent so how to make the changes permanent commit okay then we can commit so if i commit here now the changes that we have made is actually we update johnson's salary and we insert new uh, uh, sales rep name abu okay because of the tucker here we have roll back just now okay so there are two changes in this transaction so by right this is what we call as transaction script okay so inside one transaction there will be a lot of operation we have done select update we create the save point we delete we roll back to certain checkpoint okay or save point and we insert the data into the database and we make the changes permanent so this is an example of one transaction so this one is only one transaction okay by uh, by script okay so i hope you get it on how to uh, how the transaction is really done in a database i guess that's all for now see you again in the next lesson thank you